Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to him, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. A question a response, and a story. The story of Jesus making his way to Jerusalem has progressed quite a bit since the church heard last Sunday. Jesus has been teaching. Jesus has dined with a Pharisee and challenged that family. And when a lawyer who is within earshot of that whole conversation announces that Jesus is insulting him too, well, Jesus pushes at the ways that the, the lawyer and lawyers of that time pile burdens on the people. Jesus is teaching and the crowd is gathering and it is growing by Luke's estimate, the crowd is now numbering in thousands. And they are beginning to trample one another. And in the midst of all of that, Jesus is teaching about authority and paying attention to what really has authority. And the reality that the faithful, those who are faithful to the reign of God, will be called to live and to speak the truth of their faith. All of that is the background for what gets us where we are. It is out of this massive crowd that someone calls out. He asks a question, or rather perhaps it's a request or even a demand of Jesus. Teacher, Tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. With this, someone asks Jesus to judge or to arbitrate a family dispute. It's as if someone is asking, Jesus, will you choose sides? And by the way, <laughs> choose my side. Jesus will have none of it. He rebuffs the request with a question. Who set me to be arbitrator or judge over you? Jesus will not enter into the fray. As I pondered this move, I found myself reminded of a meme that was put up this past week, but it actually quoted something similar to what one of my seminary professors used to tell us. Every time you use, we use religion to draw a line to keep people out, Jesus is with the people on the other side of the line. I've recently learned that it is attributed to Hugh Hollowell. Jesus is not about drawing lines. 
In fact, much of his ministry is about moving back and forth along the boundaries, drawing out insiders out and outsiders in. His invitation to those who are faithful, those who follow him, is precisely to live that reality, inviting the outsiders in and risking, risking stepping outside the bounds. All of this is grounded and predicated in God's love for the world, a love that forgives, a love that reconciles relationship, a love that brings new life. Jesus will not be used to arbitrate, to draw lines. So there is the question and the response. Jesus goes further, though, and the remainder hinges on a warning that Jesus offers. Take care. Take care that you guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. The hinge statement, this hinge statement, points to a reality that is larger and deeper than settling disputes. It is larger and deeper than most interpretations of this text. This statement does not lead to a story that becomes a, mor a morality play on sharing, as this text is often used. This story is not a story that calls for a stewardship sermon on how to give to the church and whether you're tithing or not. So the church could surely use your offerings to further the ministry that we have in front of us. No, the core concern here that goes to the heart of the matter that Jesus is pointing to goes all the way back to the second chapter of Genesis. Remember the story of creation when, Jesus, when God creates Ha-Adam, the mud man. It becomes immediately apparent that this creation is lonely, doesn't have a companion. Ha'adam needs a partner, a companion, a helpmate. Created in the image of God, man is created also for relationship. Jesus issues a warning. That when the focus is on the accumulation of stuff, of possessions, of things, then those things start to become the object of relationship. The fundamental problem with greed is that it cuts people off from community. It cuts people off from relationships. It disconnects people from relationship with God and with one another. In Rembrandt's painting, The Parable of the Rich Man, he points to this. Note that the rich man is left with only his possessions, his things. He is fundamentally alone, cut off. From this warning, Jesus tells a story. In it, a man grows an abundant harvest. He decides to build bigger barns to accommodate his blessing. In Jesus' telling, the man becomes more and more self-sufficient. He doesn't need anyone else. He doesn't really need God. With his grain and his goods, he fancies that he can relax, eat drink, be merry. Yet God calls this man a fool. The foolishness is bound in the fetish of self-sufficiency, in not recognizing all the ways that God is already present to him and walking with him. The call is consistently a call to community, to relationship. Indeed, the call is to recognize that Jesus 
is not about setting boundaries that separate one from another or even judging between folks so that one can feel more superior. Rather, Jesus is all about crossing the boundaries for the very purpose of relationship. This is ultimately a first commandment call. There is no other God. There is no other one to fear, love, and trust. God is all in all. God intends to draw each and every one of us into relationship, and in that relationship there is abundance. And yes, when the faithful recognize that abundance, there is plenty of opportunity for generosity for the sake of self, for the sake of others, for the sake of community.